Welcome to the Holman Homestead and the Holman Ice Cream Parlor. Please follow me. We've set up this room to look a lot like the parlor would have during the time that the Holman family lived here. The original Holman household was built in 1855 as a periorical house or a place that a Roman Catholic priest would stay during his tenureship at the, the church that used to be on this property in 1854. The church in question was brought over land from Indian River by using man and horsepower. This took about a quarter of a year, sort of giving you an idea of how difficult it would have been to construct a new church on the island. These two chairs, here and here, are actually from the church and are where the priest would have sat during Mass. Original to the household as well is this large sofa here and the small oil lamp in the corner here. These were brought in by Robert Tinson Holman when he purchased the house in 1870 from the priest. Robert Tinson Holman was a merchant in Summerside from the year 1857 when he opened a small wooden department store down on the waterfront. Over the years, Robert Holman expanded his business along with one of his brothers who passed away during the 1870s. During the 1870s, Mr. Holman inherited from his brother a number of economic boons, including Holman's Island, which was home to one of the largest, if not the largest, resort in all of Canada. It was known for its bowling alleys, of which it contained two during the 1870s, but unfortunately became notorious for the swarms of mosquitoes in the area, and was closed down around 1900 and burnt down in 1904. The island currently is owned by the Island Nature Trust and I believe they might be actually having tours there soon. At any rate, Mr. Holman's business continued to expand, and here we have a picture of Mr. Holman in the center, and his, one of his sons, Harry, who would actually be one of the two sons, Harry and James, who would be inheriting the Holman home, Homestead and the Holman Limited, which was created in 1906. As we enter the other room, we see a earlier picture of Mr. Holman, created by the local artist, Wayne Wright. It says here that he was Summerside's merchant prince, and this was very true. Mr. Holman owned up to two Atlantic, transatlantic ships at the time, and did a huge amount of exporting between here and the United States. Mr. Holman actually owned a newspaper, pre-Confederation here on the island, which advocated for joining the United States rather than the island joining Confederation to avoid tariffs with the United States, which was one of his main trade partners. Mr. Holman was also one of the first to export lobster inland here. And although he was not the first nor the most successful at this business, his huge expansion into a variety of businesses ensured his success here in Summerside. After 1906, when he incorporated the com company, he unfortunately passed away, but his sons continued his legs. And a number of years later, as you shall see here, by 1932, Holman's had expanded vastly. You can see here the Holman's flag and a large broadcasting system. Now the Holman's were familiar with broadcasting systems at that time due to the fact that during the 1920s, they had created an island radio station you, on the top of their store. Now, meanwhile, back here at the home, the two daughters of Mrs. Ellen Holman, Carrie and Gladys Holman, were opening up the household here to the community. I often like to relate a story about a RAF member here from England who met Carrie Holman down near the Holman store and actually had him brought back up here to have a tea with the young lady. I, when I was speaking to them, they were celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. Like I say, I like to relate that story because it shows what a focal point that this household was during those years. Here we have a number of artifacts from the Holman household, including a beret worn by the Holman delivery persons, a number of Girl Guides implements from when Carrie Ellen Holman was one of the first island Girl Guides leaders, a few fox furs from when the Holmans were in the fox fur business, and a large amount of implements from the Holman store.
The garden I am currently standing in was created by Carrie Ellen Holman during the early 1870s when she moved in here with her husband. She wanted to create it in the latest fashion, which at that time was Victorian fashion, as Queen Victoria had just taken the throne of Britain. Now, around me, you can see that the garden is still maintained to this day and actually has been continuously maintained, making it one of the oldest, if not the oldest, continually maintained Victorian garden in all of North America. Some of the notable things in here are a... Over there, you can see a monument erected to Mrs. Harry Holman in uh, 1996 to honor her uh, contribution to the Island Girl Guides movement. As well, over here we've also discovered an engraved stone with the initials K-N-H, which I believe stands for Kathleen Nora Holman, who was one of the daughters of Robert Tinson Holman. She was born in 1871, and actually we believe she moved away during her later life to Boston. We believe that she created these initials during her childhood, so these initials are well over 100 years old. Might be difficult to see there. Thank you very much for taking the tour, and I hope to see you at Holman's.